So we just want to prove uh, using the mean value theorem to say the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side. Okay, so just a quick recap on the mean value theorem. What we basically know is uh, given that a function f of x is first of all continuous on an interval a and b and then the other condition is if it is differentiable on an in open interval a and b then there exists a point c so that the, the derivative of c or the derivative of that function on c is basically going to be equal to f of b subtract f of a divided by the difference which is b minus a and of course this, what this tells us is the derivative of the tangent is basically equivalent to the derivative of a second so using this equation we are going to prove the above um, identity there okay so what do we do so first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the left hand side of course the one condition that we're saying is in this case our f of x is going to be equivalent to the function cosine of x and then we are looking at the interval we have b and a so say on an interval a and b that's one thing that we we know there okay so i'll get first of all the first part we had this is what we had it's going to be equal to f of b subtract f of a right and then divided by b minus a now in this case what we've said is our function is what cosine of x so i'll say cosine of b minus cosine of a now divided by what the interval which is b minus a so we'll say b minus a okay that's what we're dividing with and then we know this is supposed to be equal to what the derivative so the derivative what we're talking about is going to be on a point c right so the derivative of a cosine function is we know is it's a negative sign so according to the mean value theorem we expect that it's going to be negative sign on a given point which is c okay that's where we are now what is going to be our next step here? so now at this point we can introduce back our absolute value okay so if i put the absolute value on there i'll put it on the left hand side and then the right hand side as well so the absolute values there okay so we now know that where it is negative it is going to be positive so we have cosine of b now of course the absolute value of that divided by b minus a and then of course you can just solve the absolute values there so on the light hand side what we have is we are going to remain with the absolute value of what positive sign okay interesting okay so now we all know the way a cosine a sine graph basically behaves if we are to sketch a graph right so if we try to sketch a graph of sine we expect that this is the way it's going to be moving right so a maximum point there is the one the minimum is a negative one given any point of c no matter how small or big it's going to be our values are just going to be between one and negative one okay so therefore the condition that we can bring in is we expect sine of c it will always be less than or equal to what a one and now that we know that this is the, the, the left hand side this part is equal to this it implies that even the what is on the left most is also going to be less than what one so therefore our next point is going to be so the absolute value of cosine b minus cosine of a divided by the absolute value of b minus a so what we have at this point is this is going to be less than or equal to one okay so we have a one i've dealt out well with this one and then at this point we can now multiply both ends by what by the absolute value of b minus a since we want to prove so the left hand side i multiply by the absolute value so due to lack of enough space so 
multiply by the absolute value of B minus A. So I'm multiplying. Even on the right hand side, I'll do the same. The absolute value of B minus A. So that on our left hand side, these will be able to divide. And then we are going to remain with the, the absolute value of cosine of B minus cosine of A is less than or equal to on the right hand side we are remaining with that the absolute value of so yeah the absolute value of B minus A okay so that's what we have at this point okay so now if you look at what we have this is basically equivalent to what we started with and that is how you get to prove using the mean value theorem so the same concept applies even when we have the sine function so if we had sine there sine b minus sine a the same concept applies what you just need to know is on the derivative part of the sine function where we had negative sine for the cosine it was just going to be cosine of c okay so using the same procedure you can try working out the mean value theorem proving the same related equation for the sine so that's it for this video I hope that you now know how to prove this using the mean value theorem.